ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be here today in ITHQ to open this ITHQ and College Central. I've already been here several times in this last year. We've had several events here, including the National Day Rally. And each time I'm here, I've been impressed by the enthusiasm of the students and the support of the staff. And today, I got an even warmer welcome. This opening today completes ITE's transformation towards one ITE, three colleges. This is ITE HQ and College Central, and it joins ITE College East in Simei in ITE College West in Chua And it will become a college of creativity and innovation, focusing on creative design and interactive media, aerospace and marine technology, engineering design, and manufacturing technology. It will stimulate applied learning applied learning. So when you study aerospace, we have an aerospace hub, we have a Boeing 737 here, so you can gain hands-on experience, maintaining, repairing, inspecting, and overhauling aircraft components. It will house the center of technology and also specialized centers to be built in collaboration with the industry. For example, the IT Bosch Rexroth Industrial Automation Center, the Center of Excellence in New Media with Toon Boom, and in time others. It will develop students outside the classroom, for example, with modern sports facilities, a very huge indoor sports hall on the top floor, an Olympic sized swimming pool, even a skate park. We will have a center for music and the arts. We will have this convention center. We will have this convention center here. We'll have IT Epitome, a retail mall for students' products and services from all three of ITE's campuses. So I'd like to congratulate ITE's board, management, and students on this very important milestone. ITE's journey reflects the government's commitment to develop every student to his or her full potential. We recognize that students have different talents and interests. Some are academically inclined, others excel in skills-based work. Therefore, our education system offers diverse pathways for students to learn at their own pace and to develop their unique skills. And that's why the government has consistently invested in vocational and technical training. We started doing this back in the 1960s, 50 years ago, with the Singapore Vocational Institutes. Then, in 1979, we set up the Vocational and Industrial Training Board, a VITB, to take over all vocational training and we mounted a concerted effort to upgrade the skills of the workforce. Then in 1982, we established ITE as a post-secondary program so that all students would complete secondary education first before going to ITE. A passionate advocate for the ITE was the late Dr. Teng Soon, who was the Senior Minister of State for education. He was convinced that learning should be applied towards something useful and should not take place in a vacuum. He recognized the importance of skills to improving Singaporeans' lives. And he guided and nurtured the VITB and the Polytechnics and set up ITE in 1992. He also started ITE's Center for Music and the Arts to develop students' talents, confidence, and public speaking skills through music, arts, and culture. And you got a small sample of their talents and their energy in the performance just now. So ITE has quite naturally and fittingly 
named awards and prizes after Dr. Teng Soon. For example, there's a Teng Soon Scholarship for IT graduates who go on to pursue studies at polytechnics. There's a Teng Soon Gold Medal to the most outstanding graduate in each polytechnic who was formerly from the ITE. And tonight, or this evening, we have several scholarship winners and gold medalists with us tonight. But here, as we mark the completion of the one ITE, three colleges journey, it's fitting that we associate Dr. Tay's name with this new campus. Therefore, we will call this convention center the Tay Eng Sun Convention Center. And I hope, I hope the name will inspire future generations of students to aim high and do their best. And I'm very glad that Dr. Tay's family is here this evening, his widow Ross and his children Lucy and Robert and their spouses. Thank you for being with us. <laughs> ITE is a critical pillar of our education system together with the polys and the universities. It gives students a solid foundation for lifelong learning and relevant skills for future employment. And because the ITE has done a good job, so our students find good employment quickly after graduation. From the ITE, also from the polys, within six months, 90% of the students find jobs. Their starting salaries have been going up, and many outstanding alumni have made their mark in society, and some of them are here with us this evening. Universities produce graduates who also find jobs readily, and graduate unemployment rate in Singapore is one of the lowest in the whole world. It's a remarkable achievement considering the situation in so many other countries in southern Europe, in Italy, in Greece, in Spain. Youth unemployment is a major, major social problem, in some cases exceeding 50%. And students who graduate may pass five, ten years without finding a job. And then time has passed, and it becomes very difficult to start a career, ever. And lives are blighted. Even in our own region, with vibrant economies, it's not so easy. China has a big problem with graduate unemployment. In Hong Kong, youth unemployment is much higher than general unemployment. But in Singapore, we have no such problem. And the credit goes to our students who have studied hard, the education system, which has trained them well, and the economy, which has created jobs for them abundantly. Singapore students are highly driven. There's a strong desire to upgrade themselves, especially to get a diploma or a degree, or if you have a degree, a postgraduate degree. And we're providing students more opportunities to do so. More university places, more diverse paths, more institutions, SIT, UNISIM. So many ideas, but one objective, so that students have the chance to pursue subjects and skills that improve their prospects for employment and for their lives. But I, while we provide these opportunities, I would also like to remind students and encourage you not to pursue the paper chase, just for paper qualifications. A degree which is not relevant to industry isn't going to improve your employment prospects. That's one of the things which has gone wrong in the countries which have serious problems with graduate unemployment. Take South Korea, for example. 70 percent 70% of their students earn degrees. Nearly three quarters of young people become graduates. But the economy cannot generate jobs for 70% of the population to be graduates. 
So university graduates have a very tough time and in fact have a higher unemployment rate than high school graduates. And in, quite often, if you are in that situation, you do your sums, the qualification which you have earned and paid to earn may not be the, it's not worth the cost of attaining that qualification. And maybe so in Korea, becoming so in Britain, certainly so in the US, with some college degrees earning negative returns. But there are other positive examples too in the world which we should learn from. Countries which have recognized these risks and value applied education. For example, Switzerland or Denmark or Germany. They have good comprehensive systems of technical and vocational education and training, TVET, technical and vocational education and training. And in fact, in these countries, most students who finish compulsory schooling continue with technical and vocational education and training, not with academic training. And these are programs which are run together with companies. Companies co-invest in the TVET programs. They cover apprentices' salaries, they cover the training materials, they even fund the instructors. And the students who study in TVET, in TVET and do well emerge proud of their skills and are well respected in society. And their families are proud of them too. Our ITE and polytechnic system has been successful because, like the Swiss, the Germans and the Danes, we focus on acquiring skills and on applied learning. Our challenge now is to continue creating opportunities for our young people to fulfill their aspirations in a future which is going to be very different. An economy which is more sophisticated and diversified, where the growth is going to come from productivity improvements and new products and services, not yet dreamt of or invented where good jobs will be there, but good jobs will require a wide range of high-order skills and expertise, and where many existing jobs will be completely transformed by technology, and some jobs will disappear entirely. So to prepare our young to seize these opportunities, we've got to make two important shifts. First we have to focus more on applied learning. To integrate classroom learning with real life applications on the job. And to encourage students to creatively apply concepts to practical problems. Hence the 737 on this campus. Hence we facilitate internships and work attachments and help students to acquire deep skills and to integrate theory and practice to apply what they learn in ways which will be useful to them in their jobs. And we have already been starting to do this across our entire system. We have applied learning programs in secondary schools. We have applied degree programs in UNISIM and SIT. And we've also got applied learning as well as industry-relevant R&D in our four existing universities. So first, we must push for applied learning. Secondly, we have to promote lifelong learning. Because lifelong learning during your careers, not just one segment of school or university or poly time or ITE time at the beginning, is the best way to progressively upgrade ourselves, to work, to gain experience, to learn new skills, acquire further qualifications, and then repeat the cycle throughout our working careers. So after graduation, instead of going for a diploma or a degree or a postgraduate degree immediately, work a while, then take up a course which is relevant to your work, 
maybe part-time, maybe full-time. Earn a more advanced qualification that's relevant to your needs and that will help you to advance your interests. That is a practical, I think, even ideal model for many students. So I hope students will consider this seriously, and I hope your families will also consider this seriously, and the government will help you to do this. We are building two new continuous education and training campuses. They'll be ready soon. Our institutes of higher learning will play a bigger role in lifelong learning, and we will commit the resources and the support to make this an attractive path for people, for young people, and throughout their lives. With this in mind, we will launch an applied study in the Polytechnics and ITE Review to strengthen, and, to strengthen applied pathways to enhance career and academic progression prospects for poly and ITE graduates, to better match students' strengths and interests to applied pathways and opportunities, and to strengthen the roles of the polys and the ITEs in research, innovation, and enterprise. So basically, how to promote applied learning, lifelong learning, enhance your career and your advancement prospects, match you and your strengths to the opportunities which we can create, and to improve ITEs, polys, and their role in our system. So we've called it the Applied Study in the Polytechnics and ITE Review, A-S-P-I-R-E, Review, Aspire. And it aspires to do good work, and Ms. Indrani Raja aspires to chair the committee. <laughs> and she's here with us. It will involve industry leaders, education institution leaders, and government agencies, and it should finish by next year, and I look forward to the committee's recommendations. The ITE has done an excellent job. It has a proven brand of education, high international standing, good standing with employers in Singapore, I think good reputation with the students and the alumni. So I'd like to thank ITE's partners from industry and overseas for your support. I'd like to thank the Board of Governors, management and staff for their hard work, especially Mr. Bob Tan, Chairman of the Board, and Mr. Bruce Poe, CEO of ITE. And I'd also like to thank students. Thank you very much for showing the world what ITE can do. So congratulations again on the opening of this college and the HQ. Thank you.